G'day Ralph here, welcome to Geoterrix Outdoors Australia. Done some hikes in the past and noticed when we've come back after we've set a walk or a hike that we've had different distances that come back um, at the end of it and wondered why. We're all wearing garments, the, all the kids and Sonia and I and I've got Ty here and we thought we'd put it through a test to see if all smartwatches and the GPS's in smartwatches are going to give us the same distance on exactly the same paths. And this is a short little video to show you that not all GPS modules are created equally. Tyrone's got a brand new Garmin Phoenix 6X. I've got an older model 6X and Sonia's got a Vivo Active 3. And just to, uh, to give a bit of comparison, I've got an old style um, it's a Haycom uh, GPS antenna here which I synced up to the phone uh, and used the topo maps but this is a GPS unit just an external unit let's see what the results are for a reasonably short half a K walk Yeah, well, interesting. Let's have a quick look. Tyrone got 0.59, Sonia got 0.6, I got 0.54, and the phone with the little external GPS antenna got 0.554. So why are they different? Let's do a deep dive and find out. All right, that's another hike today. I thought I'd share with you the, the deep dive that I've done. It's not just a, a rabbit hole, it seems to be a rabbit warren. There are thousands of sites out in, on the internet, YouTube, um, various other social media sites. There's actually websites that are dedicated to, to GPS and the information behind them. I'll put a couple of links in the description from the two that I found particularly useful. And one in particular, that had a table with the various brands of smart devices and how much they on average are either above or below the distance that, um, that a, a proper GPS will give you. Very interesting. Anyway, what have I found? So look, there's four major providers. There's the GPS, which is Global Positioning System, which is run by the US government. There's the European system, which is Galileo. There's the Chinese system, which is Beidou, and then there's the Russian Central Asian, which is GLONASS. And all four of those are, have got lots of satellites, 24 to 30 odd satellites in orbit at any one time. And in our particular area in Australia, we need a minimum of four, but there's generally eight to 16 in the sky at any one time that we can actually get a signal from. So how does GPS work? It's actually a constant signal from a satellite or a number of satellites and they beam down data which is time and location. So the receiver software on your smart device receives that information from a minimum of four satellites and converts it to um, Cartesian data which is often then converted to Latin long. I can have a number of configurations on my on my watch as well as my smartphone and uh, a few other bits and pieces. So the big question is why the difference? Quite a few factors can alter what data you get on your phone to what Sonia's got or what Tyrone's got or anyone else for that matter. Some of those are signal strength. Signal strength because of the various geometry and location of the satellites the further they are away the longer the signal has to, to get to you. There's also physical things like trees. Have a look behind us, we're walking through trees, leaves, buildings, bridges, and various other things. And there's some that are a little bit out there, something, things like um, radio interference, especially in Canberra. If you're walking around Black Mountain, you can really get some distortion happening there, and that's where we noticed uh, uh, the biggest differences. 
and solar flares and various other ones. Look, this isn't uh, a video about the complexity of GPS. This is just simply to, a little, little fun experiment here. I'll just say that the GPSs I've used in the past in geophysics and also in surveying for geophysics have been in the high end and they call them the high end because they, they are highly, highly accurate down to the millimetre where a smart device will get you between um, centimetres to metres. On the gps.com website um, they specify 4.9 metres within 4.9 metres of accuracy. In the old days they used to alter the signal that only the military got the accurate GPS and all the rest of us got, uh, got pretty crap signal. Um, but the, the high-end ones have usually got two receivers. So there's usually one on the device, like a trimble or something else like that, and there's either a base station or another known point. In some of the geophysics I've done, we actually then got that data and mapped it against a known trig point. That's how accurate we need it to be with this sort of stuff. So in short, there's lots of factors that can affect the accuracy of, uh, of a smart device. And when you get your smart devices, you actually can read some of the, in the disclaimer that you know you shouldn't take this as, as accurate. So there's fair warning. So look, on your next walk or hike or kayak or, or whatever you're, you're out to do, why don't you try this experiment amongst yourselves with your family, with your kids, with your friends and see how close or how far away you are. It's a fun little experiment. But look, hey, if you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends. Please subscribe. Leave us a comment. Love to read your comments. And thanks for watching.